So we're now going to have a look at extruding layers, which is another feature new to After Effects CS6. And it's fantastic. It opens up a whole new way of working in After Effects. So if you want to follow along, open up Extruding Layers AEP, which you can find in the Introduction to 3D folder. And you'll notice in here, I've already created a curve on this layer. Again, that's a new feature. Curved layers as well are a new feature of CS6. Now I've got these cogs down here, which are animating. And what I want to do is get my dancers standing on the cogs. Now, in order to make that really work, they really need to have depth. So I'm going to go into my cog one settings. And let's just use the camera tool just to move that a little bit. So we can see a little bit more of that. So zoom out a little bit and just move it up in our custom view. And if we open up our COG1, you'll notice that underneath the transform options, we have geometry options. And important to note that you have to be in Ray Trace 3D in order to see these options. If I switch back to Classic 3D, which is the default, I lose those options. So make sure that you're in Ray Traced 3D in order to see those options. And if I click OK, my curve will come back and I now have access to my geometry. So how do we extrude it? Well, we extrude it just by scrubbing that value. And you'll notice that I can now make my cog higher. And you'll see that it has depth. Now, at the moment, we haven't got any light in here, so it's hard to really see the edges. But if I was to add, say, a new light, so let's just add a spotlight because it's nice and quick to do that, you'll start to see the depth. Let's add a little bit of ambient light as well. So we'll add an ambient light. And we'll make that about 70%. And you can start to see the depth of that cog now that the shadows are shining on it. Now, if I want to go and adjust it, I can come down here and just make that a little bit less deep. So we'll bring it down a little bit. And we also have options for adding bevels. So I can add an angular bevel and I can adjust the bevel depth. And you'll see that that's giving me a flat edged bevel. Now, if I move so that we can see the hole in the center, it's also given the hole in the center the same value. I can adjust that if I want to, if I want to have a smaller bevel in the center than on the edges. And that's really important when you're working with something like text. So let's move that up again. Now you can also choose concave or convex. So if we want to create a curved edge, for example, a nice soft curved edge, we can create a convex shape. And of course, everything you see me do is animatable over time. So we can animate things growing. So I'm going to bring that down to around about there. We don't want it too big. Of course, I can always copy these settings. So select them, hit Command C or Control C, go into Cog 2 and just paste them in. So now both cogs have extrusion and depth. And you'll see that as they move around, we start to really get an idea of 3D. Now, the other one that I want to extrude is this one here. And this is the spindle. If we have a look from our top view, we can see the spindle in the middle there. I'm going to go back to my custom view. And what we're going to do is open up this and extrude it quite a lot. So I'm going to go into my geometry options and we'll extrude it. And we're going to make like a spindle and the spindle will carry another cog. So what we're going to do is duplicate cog one. So Command D or Control D. I'm going to move it up. So I'm going to go back to my selection tool by hitting V. And I'm going to move it up to the top of my spindle. And I can use the other view just to get that in exactly the right place. Now, the other thing we're going to do is just scale it down a little bit. So we'll have a smaller cog at the top than at the bottom. So what we can do now is actually animate the extrusion options. So I can come in here and say, OK, that's where I want the animation to end. So let's drag that to the one second mark. And then let's bring that back down to zero or we can scrub the value back down to zero. So we've now got it extruding over time. Now I'd probably put a little bounce in there. So let's just at that point go beyond the scale value so it kind of jumps up and we'll just preview that. Now the other thing I'd 
do there is just match up this cog here with the move. So basically, I would just take it and keyframe it in terms of position. So we select that, hit P for position, set keyframe there, and then bring it all the way back down to the bottom at the beginning. Now you may need to keyframe intermediate points, so we may need to go halfway through and just check that it matches up with the speed of the spindle. But you gradually get that animating so it looks as if it's going up with the spindle. And there we go. OK, and that's going to become a platform for a can to stand on. Now, as I said, it's really quick working in this Draft 3D, but you'll notice that if I jump to Adaptive Resolution, and I'm on a Mac with no supported graphics card, when you're working in Raytrace 3D, you really want to use one of the supported graphics cards. And you can see a list of those on the Adobe website. But this is an ATI card that isn't supported. And you'll notice that if I go to Adaptive Resolution, it takes quite a long time to render the ray tracing. So it took about, I don't know, seven seconds to render that scene. And it's not at the highest quality either. It's really important that you work with a good graphics card. However, if you're on a laptop and you just want to get work done quickly, Fast Draft is really good for working in 3D and it allows you to build these scenes really, really quickly. So that's a little bit about how you can extrude and animate 3D layers now in After Effects CS6.